I've always been in love with potatoes. Years went by where I only ate potatoes and chicken. I don't think I ate vegetables for a good portion of my life. I was a picky eater. I was a picky kid and like, we grew up pretty poor, so it was fine. It was just have potatoes. We could do that. My mom was fine with like, all right, all you're gonna eat is potatoes. That's, that's cheap, we'll just keep cooking potatoes. My name is Jeremiah Stone. I'm from Contra and Wild Air Restaurants on the Lower East Side, and we're gonna be making Palm Darfan, which is a dish that we have at Wild Air. It's basically a very carefully cut uh, McDonald's hash brown. So the first step into making our Palm Darfan is gonna be pickling some jalapenos and some shallots. That's gonna go to make a relish that goes on top of the Palm Darfan, and then we put sea urchin on top of that. We're gonna start off with heating up our pickling liquid, which is gonna be about four cups of filtered water. And then we're gonna add uh, about two cups of grain distilled vinegar. And then I have 50 grams of sugar and 100 grams of kosher salt. So we're just gonna dissolve the sugar and salt by whisking it in and while it's heating up to make sure that it's all melted in there. We're using jalapenos in this dish, it gives a little bit of heat, but with the pickle, it helps mellow that out. And that acidity helps cut through the fat of the, the sea urchin. Just take a small knife and I'm gonna gut the inside of the, the jalapeno. And you see all the seeds just kind of come out there. Make sure to wash your hands before you go to the bathroom. Seriously. And then the shallots, we're just gonna take off the ends. The same, same reason with the jalapeno, just to kind of expose some of the flesh. So I'm just gonna take off the skin, throw those in there. Just gonna bring it up basically to boil and shut it off after that. Make the pickle the day before, and it should last for, you know, a good two and a half weeks without it becoming either, you know, the texture changing or becoming a little too saturated. So I have the hot liquid, I'm just gonna pour that over. I'm gonna use a bowl here. That's a clean bowl, and it's just gonna weigh down the jalapeno and the shallots so it stays submerged under there. Just wrap it up, leave it overnight, and then the next day when it's cool, take it out, and we'll chop it up and kind of make a relish. And then we mix that with a little bit of uh, yuzu kosho. The other element of this dish is the palm darfan, or potato darfan. It tastes really good because it doesn't get grated, so we're gonna use a mandolin to slice it into flat pieces, and then we'll cut it. So when we cook it, you'll have a uh, crispy outside, and the inside will be tender, or kind of creamy, but you'll taste all the different like strings of potato, instead of it being kind of one big mashed thing. So I'm gonna peel the potatoes now. You can use a russet, or like a Kennebec, something that's not too, too waxy. So when I went to culinary school, you know, we did a whole week in, in cooking potatoes. I was like, this is great. Learn all sorts of type of uh, potato dishes. When me and my partner Fabian decided to open Wild Air, I was just like, we should just do a classic palm darfan with, with like a twist to it. So that was the sea urchin. We're gonna use a mandolin. It's gonna help us get some flat pieces to cut. You can do it by hand for sure. But if you have a mandolin, it's gonna be a lot faster. We don't want it to be paper thin because it's gonna cook really fast and you'll lose the texture. So we want it to have basically like a matchstick. If you have three potatoes, that'll be enough. But I have two huge ones. Stack it as thick as you feel comfortable with. Just want to put it into a mixing bowl and work quickly because it's going to start to oxidize. It'll turn color. That'll affect the flavor and the appearance. So I have my pan here. I have clarified butter, which has a higher smoking point than, than um, just the butter on its own. And also, you're going to have the flavor of the butter, which is what we, what we want. So we're gonna season it right away with a bit of salt. And we're gonna season the outside too. This is an opportunity to get the seasoning in the inside of the dish. And a little bit of, um, just a small amount of black pepper. When we go into the pan, it's all twisted and, and that'll help to really form a, an interlocking potato cake. And so while it's heating up, it's gonna to start to cook the potato and the potato's gonna get softer. And this is an opportunity to kind of create the shape that I want. And so I'm tucking in the loose strands of potato and we'll form a crust on the bottom. And then at that point we can flip it over and sear the other side. Take a little bit of just your standard aluminum foil and wrap a, another pan the same size and just 
It's gonna help weigh it down, give a little bit of more even pressure to that. So right now I'm gonna take a look at the underside. It's, it's starting to get golden. McDonald's color, what we're looking for. Carefully flip that over to the other side. And if I need to add a little bit of uh, clarified butter, if you see the pan's kind of dry, then I would do that now. And so just continue to shape the, the edges and just kind of tucking the, the other side that was a little bit less cooked underneath. And so we have this golden crust on one side and then we're gonna try to achieve that on the other. And after that, we'll flip it back over for a little bit more color and then it's pretty much done. You can just flip that over and nice and crispy. And it's gonna be really tender and cooked in the inside. So you don't really worry about it being raw in the middle. We don't wanna overcook it, but it's already cooked. It's, it's been steaming in there. You wanna start it out at a higher heat and you turn it down to around medium. We'll get the color without it burning any of the, of the potato. So I have some uh, paper towel here. I'm just gonna take this out and let this cool off. And also I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of salt at the end while it's still warm. And so we're just gonna put it on the paper towel to absorb a little bit of that butter that we cooked it in. This is uh, uni or sea urchin from Maine. That's where the, my favorite uh, sea urchin comes from. Uh, so these are actually the gonads of the, the sea urchin. Uh, what, what you call tongues. Briny, creamy, you know, I think it works really well with potato. I'm just gonna cut this um, into six. Uh, and then we have the relish that we made that's been sitting for uh, overnight or several hours and the diced up um, jalapeno and shallot. That goes on top of the pomme dauphin. And then I'm just gonna take a few tongues of this uh, sea urchin. It's gonna go right on top. And although it, it, it is briny, a little bit of salt helps bring out a little bit more of that flavor. So this is a palm dauphin with uh, sea urchin, jalapeno, and shallot relish. I'm just gonna eat this now. It's creamy, it's crispy, it's got a little bit of spice. That's good. Mm, that's how I like to start my day.